Welcome to another edition of Rise and Shine Yoga. I'm Paul, the owner of Oxford Yoga Studio in downtown Oxford, 18 North Washington. We're on the same block as Red Naps, the restaurant. Uh, I want to welcome you back. We've been kind of away for a couple weeks, but we're back at it uh, doing another episode of Rise and Shine Yoga. So as we always do, I want you to come to a seated position on your mat. You can have your legs crossed or straight in front of you. I want you to bring your palms together at the center of the heart, close your eyes and bow your chin to chest. It's always good to set an intention for our practice. I look at it as a dedication for our practice. I look at it as kind of developing what we call in yoga, good karma. And all karma is, is if you do good things, good things may happen to you in the future. And if you do bad things, bad things may happen to you in the future. So we're just starting off with a good intention, good way to start off with some good karma. This intention can be for anyone, anything, a group of people, it can be for your friends, for your family. It can also be for people that maybe you're not on good terms with at the moment. And whoever it is, it doesn't matter. I want you to use this intention throughout your practice. Uh, if your body starts to struggle in some of the poses or your breath goes away, come back to this intention, which is the real reason why we're doing this whole practice in the first place. And rest assured that even though you're going to get the physical benefits of the practice this morning, your intention will as well. So they're going to receive just as much benefit from this as you are. So just make your intention. And we seal in our intention just by bowing our chin to our chest. Just sealing it in for the duration of our practice. And I'll come back up. And I want you to start to develop that yoga breath, what we call ujjayi breath, which is a deep inhale through the nose. And an exhale through the nose. And as we exhale through the nose, we constrict the back of the throat. So it's kind of like a fogging of the mirror sound. The breath should be slow and controlled. We're not rushing the breath. It's one breath, one movement. So if you find yourself either not breathing or the breathing is becoming rushed, just try to come back to the one breath, one movement. So with our intention made and our breath underway, let's continue with beginning of our practice in the warm-up. So let's roll forward into tabletop pose or called hands and knees. Have your hands directly underneath your shoulders, your knees directly underneath your hips. Take a quick look back. If you see your feet, just bring them back behind your knees. Come to a flat back. And what we're going to do is called cat cows. So we're going to inhale, drop the belly, lift the head. And then exhale, round the back like a scared cat. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the head. And exhale, round the back. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the head. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the head. Exhale, Round the back, one more time. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the head. Then exhale, round the back. Coming to a flat back, bring the big toes of your feet together, sit back on your heels to our first down, or our first child's pose in the morning. Your arms can be extended in front of you or by your side. Your knees can be close together or you can have them wide. If they're close together, it helps with the lower back. If they're wide, they help with the hips. Totally up to you. Now very slowly, come back up to tabletop pose. And with child's pose, I want you to know that you can come to this pose, child's pose at any time. If your mind is wandering, the breath is struggling, your muscles aren't cooperating, please come to child's pose. Um, when you come to child's pose, it means that you are taking care of your body. Because like I always tell my students, you know, yoga is not a competition. We're not competing against our neighbor or the teacher. We're doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves. So. 
If you need to cut the child's pose, cut the child's pose. So in our hands and knees tabletop, we're gonna do what's called thread the needle. So once you inhale your right arm up to the sky, then slowly take the right arm, slide it underneath the left as you twist over to the left. Your right cheekbone touches the mat. You can have your left hand on the mat, or if you want a little more of a twist, you can bring it out to the small of your back. It's a good pose just to get the breath under control. Very slowly. If your left hand was on your back, place it flat on the mat. Now we're going to slowly unwind the right arm, bring it up to the sky, and then place it gently onto the mat. Now we're going to do the other side. So inhale the left arm up to the sky, and then slide it underneath your right, twisting over to your right. Left cheekbone touching the mat. You can have your right hand stay on the mat or you can bring it onto the small of your back for more of a twist but whatever it is on your body If your hand is on your back, place it onto the mat, slowly unwind the left arm from behind the right, raising the left arm to the sky, placing the left hand back onto the mat, come back into child's pose. Slowly come up, make your way to a seated position at the front of your mat. This ends our first segment of Rise and Shine Yoga, so if you need to get a drink of water, get a drink of water or a towel, take a breath. And in our next segment, we will continue with the warm-up and our standing poses. Hi, this is Connie again from Connie's Kitchen, coming to you from Treetop Lodge, the place where magic happens and unicorns roam freely. Of course, you have to come to the lodge to understand about the unicorn thing, but they're everywhere. We'll be doing a wide variety of cooking shows here on Oxford Community Television, and I personally would like to thank the crew for coming out and giving me this opportunity to share my passion and what I love to do with you from Connie's Kitchen. So please join us on Oct TV, join us at the lodge, and look for us all over the town. And if you see unicorns, they probably came from here. See you soon. Welcome back to our next segment of Rise and Shine Yoga. We're going to continue with our standing poses. And as always, I like to start with sun A's. It's a good way to really warm up the body, generate some heat. So I want you to check your stance. Make sure your feet are about hip distance apart. You're standing up tall. Your shoulders are relaxed. And a good way to make sure your shoulder blades are relaxed is you just inhale them up, back, and down. Another good way is bring your arms by the side and have your palms open up. But I like to start all my standing poses with my palms at the center of the heart. There's no particular reason why I do, I just like to do it that way. So we're gonna inhale, arms really reach to the sky, maybe do a little back bend, and then exhale, full forward over straight legs. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees. Step back to the top of a push-up. Make sure 
your hands or underneath your shoulder blades. And then exhale, lower all the way down to the bottom, keeping your elbows in tight. And inhale, straighten the arms, lift the chest, up dog, then uncurl the toes, lift the hips into our first down dog of the morning. Your hands press firmly into the mat. Maybe bicycle your feet. Eventually your heels will touch the mat. Gaze is toward the back of your mat. And good breath. Then of your next exhale, look between the hands, bend the knees. Walk both feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Really extend the arms up. Then exhale, palms together, center of the heart. Going into the next one. Inhale, the arms up to the sky. Exhale, slowly fold forward over straight legs. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees. Step back, top of a push up. Exhale, lower all the way down to the bottom. Inhale, straighten the arms. Lift the chest, up dog. Exhale, uncurl the toes. Lift the hips, down dog. Five good breaths. The end of your next exhale, look between the hands, bend the knees, walk, step, both feet to the front of the mat, inhale, look up halfway, exhale, fold forward, inhale, come all the way up to standing, exhale, palms together, center of the heart, and let's just do one more for fun, inhale, the arms up to the sky, exhale, slowly fold forward, inhale, look up halfway, Exhale, bend the knees, step back, top of a push-up, lower all the way down to the bottom. Inhale, straighten the arms, lift the chest, up dog. Exhale, uncurl the toes, lift the hips, down dog, five good breaths. And of your next exhale, look between the hands, bend the knees, walk, step, both feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Exhale, palms together, center of the heart. Good job, take a breath, or get a drink of water. We're gonna do a balancing pose. So I want you to we start on the left side, so I want you to spread the toes of your left foot really wide. Really press that left foot into the mat, almost like you're going to press a hole through the floor. Bring your hands to the waist. You're just going to inhale the right knee up. Then you take your right hand, bring it to the right knee, standing up tall. And open up the right knee to the right. Bring it to center. Take your hands, grasp it behind your right knee. Give yourself a little kiss. Release. Extend the right leg. Don't touch the floor. Stand up tall. We're not leaning back. We're just standing up tall using our hips to raise our leg.
and release and shake out your leg. Now we'll do the other side. To really plant that right foot firmly onto the mat. Stand up tall, bring the hands to the waist. Inhale the left knee up. Maybe bring the left hand to the left knee. Open up to the left. Come back to center. Take your hands. Grab the left knee up. A little kiss. Release. Extend the left leg straight in front of you. Standing up tall. And release and shake it up. Good job. Balancing poses are always a challenge, at least for me. So, so now we're just going to finish in our Buddha squat. So bring your feet about a little bit wider than your mat. And your toes can point at an angle or whatever's most comfortable. And we're just going to come down into a Buddha squat. Bring your hands. Together in front of your chest. If you want a little bit more of an open hip op or an inner thigh opener, you can press your elbows on the inside of your legs, which kind of opens it up so there's a straight line all the way across. Now place your right hand behind your left right hip, left hand on your left hip. Come to a seated position. Take a break. And we'll see you in our final segment. This is Connie again from Connie's Kitchen, coming to you from Treetop Lodge, the place where magic happens and unicorns roam freely. Of course, you have to come to the lodge to understand about the unicorn thing, but they're everywhere. We'll be doing a wide variety of cooking shows here on Oxford Community Television, and I personally would like to thank the crew for coming out and giving me this opportunity to share my passion and what I love to do with you from Connie's Kitchen. So please join us on Oct TV. join us at the lodge, and look for us all over the town. And if you see unicorns, they probably came from here. See you soon. Welcome back to the final segment of Rise and Shine Yoga. We're gonna finish with our seated poses and closing meditation. So the first one is Dandasana. So extend your legs straight in front of you. Your toes are pulled back towards you. Take your hands, bring them by your hips. Sit up tall, close the eyes. Gaze is level. And just breathe. Open your eyes, inhale the arms up to the sky, exhale, fold forward, take your peace fingers, wrap them around your big toe, it's Paschimottasana or Western stretch. Inhale, come up halfway, and then exhale, fold forward, keeping your toes pulled back. You want a flat back, so you don't want a round back, you want a flat back. Kind of think of it as your heart is coming towards your toes. If you want a little bit more, you can pull your elbows out to the side. Release your mind, come back up to seated. In a yoga called Ashtanga, between all of our seated poses, we have what's called an optional vinyasa. And I'll just 
show you what it is. It's optional, so if you want to do it, you can. If you don't, that's fine too. So after most of our seated poses, we inhale, come back, sit on our tailbone, cross of our ankles, exhale, roll forward into the top of a push-up, and while we're all the way down to the bottom, then inhale, straighten the arms, lift the chest for up dog, exhale, come back to down dog, and then come back to a seated position at the front of the mat. Again, it's called an optional vinyasa, which means you don't have to do it. Okay, so extend your leg straight in front of you, keeping your right leg extended. I want you to inhale the left knee up, and then bring the right, the left foot on the inside of the left thigh. Have the toes of your right foot pulled back, and you want your right foot pointed up to the sky. You may have to turn your torso to meet your right foot. We're going to inhale the arms up to the sky. Exhale, full forward. And you can take a bind either behind the foot or the toe or the ankle or the shin. If you have a strap handy, you can wrap it around the sole of the foot and use that. And again, we're keeping a flat back, so we're not rounding the back. It's not about your head coming to your knee. Release your bind. Slowly come back up to seated. Inhale the left knee up. Extend the leg, left leg straight in front of you. We're going to do the other side, or between each side if you wanted to, you can take the optional vinyasa, but we're just going to skip it here. So we're going to inhale the right knee up. Take the right sole of the right foot. Bring on the inside of the left leg. Your left foot is pointing toward the sky. Toes are pulled toward you. And again, you may have to turn your torso to face your left foot. You can inhale the arms to the sky and exhale fold forward and again you can take a bind behind your foot or the toe or the shin or the ankle or strap. And again just focusing on the breath and we're not having a rounded back. Slowly release your bind, come back up to seated, inhale the right knee up, extend the right leg straight in front of you, and again if you wanted to, you could take the optional vinyasa. Now I want you to bring the soles of your feet together and bring them as close to your body as you can. Bound angle pose, or commonly referred to as butterfly. And try to open your feet like a book. And there's two parts to this. So sitting up tall, we're going to inhale, and we're going to exhale, just bend your chin to chest. That's all you're going to do. Slowly bring your head back up. Now we're going to inhale. Now we're going to exhale, fold forward. But again, we're going to keep a flat back, not rounded back, a flat back. And if you want, and it's available to you, you can press your elbows on your calves on the inside to open up. And slowly release, come back up, extend the leg straight in front of you, and again, if you wanted to, you can take the optional vinyasa. But now I want you to come to lie on your back, bring your knees into the chest, you rock side to side, bring your arms out to a T, let your knees drop over to the right, and if it's available, lift your head, take your gaze over your left shoulder. 
breath go. The higher you bring your knees toward the chest, the more of a spinal twist you get. But again, that's totally up to you and how you're feeling. Inhale, bring the knees and the gaze back to center. And let the knees drop over to the left. Take your gaze over your right shoulder. Bring the knees and the gaze back to center. Hug the knees into the chest. Rock side to side. Make your way up to a seated position at the front of the mat. Cross your feet, cross your legs, bring the palms together to center of the heart. Again, it's been an honor and a pleasure to lead you in your practice this morning. Thank you for watching Rise and Shine Yoga, and we will see you next week. And we, as we always do, we end with Namaste. At Oakland County Parks and Recreation, we value what you value. Family relationships, community connections, good health, environmental stewardship, and economic stability. Oakland County residents and businesses have invested in preserving nearly 7,000 acres of parkland. Since 1966, 13 parks and golf courses have been acquired maintained and improved. Oakland County Parks and Facilities are made possible by millage funds supported by Oakland County residents. For a home valued at $200,000, the homeowner pays less than $25 per year to support the Oakland County Parks. With every generation, families create lifelong memories at Oakland County's award-winning parks. From exciting summer escapades and stories around the campfire to brisk fall walks on wooded trails and snowy winter outings, the outdoors beckons year-round. It's time to get up, get out, and get going at the Oakland County Parks. Active recreation options abound. Cross-country ski or mountain bike on tree-lined trails. Scale the rock climbing wall. Get your kicks with soccer at several sports fields. Row or paddle a boat on four picturesque inland lakes. It's an easy journey. Most parks are just a short drive away. A quick tip, all our parks and golf courses end in Oaks. To find your favorite, just go to DestinationOakland.com. Click to pick Oceans of Motion water parks at Red Oaks and Waterford Oaks the Wint Nature Center at Independence Oaks, Teen Adventures, and even Entertainment to Go. When outdoor adventures on your list, there's fishing, beaches, boating, playgrounds, and seasonal hunting. The campgrounds at Addison Oaks and Groveland Oaks feel like being up north with plenty of recreation options. Want to get fit? Hit the trails! Oakland County Parks boasts more than 68 miles for strolling, walking, hiking and running, biking, or horseback riding.